life on the Sunshine Coast. Visit sunshinecoast.com. The sun isn't shining today, but that doesn't matter because we're having fun. The boys are on the line and ready to go. Ten men. Only one will be crowned Nutrigrain Ironman Series Round 2 champion. Lacey and Collins there. Corey Taylor's having fun. The Kiwi, Luke Cuff, TJ Hendy's your Round 1 winner. Jack, we're on the start line once again. It's time to make your choice. Who do you like? Well, we're looking at close to the best 10 men in the sport, Josh. We've got the current world champion, Shannon Eckstein. The current Coolangatta gold champion, Ali Day. The current series champion, Matt Poole. And round one winner, TJ Hendy, all here ready to go. I can't pick it. You tell me who you like. Max Brooks and Corey Taylor, those two as well. We can throw it in with James Lacey. Some of the boys from Generation Next, they're off and away, and they didn't go as far right as the girls did. Very, very spread out. Dan Collins straight in. Luke Cuff, TJ Hendy, and Shannon next time. More to the right-hand side as we look out to see, and the swell is on. There's six to eight-foot waves on the back bank. We've got ten men, and two will be eliminated at the end of the swim. We'll go from there to every time they hit the beach. Swim, ski, board, the same order as we've had all day long. And it's a yellow cap leading out. Maybe the Newport cap there of Max Brooks and Dan Collins on his right-hand side. Well, a lot tighter racing, Josh, when we've only got 10 men. They've stayed in a very tight pack. And the boys are all around the can now, so not as spread out as what we saw in the women's race. And now hunting for their path, their chosen path on the way home to try and pick up a wave and open up some form of gap. Couple of little waves on offer on the left-hand side. Who was that? Oh, it's a surface paradise cap. So either TJ Hendy, but I think it's Ali Day out the back. Someone's pulled off the back and got thrown over the top. I think TJ Hendy went over the falls he tried to pull out of it he's rodent over the top of it and he's done a couple of butterfly strokes back out in front that is exactly the way his old man would have done it tj hendy unbelievable surf skills there i thought he'd had a little sook and a sulk and tried to get away from it but he was riding at home very very well they're coming from every direction at the moment ali day got that front wave and established a lead and the rest of the field's chasing well he was the only man down it and that's opened him up a 20 to 30 meter gap at this stage but he's still got plenty of work to do a little bubble coming through for him now and that's going to be enough to give him a slight lead going into this second part of the M-shaped swim. Well just like the women's final there you give one of the guys a little lead and they can turn it into a massive one so Dan Collins hot in pursuit and well one of the more experienced up against one of the least experienced men in the entire field. Dan finished with a couple of top tens last season. Shannon Eckstein chasing hard. Matt Poole running very quickly. Corey Taylor's had a great swim. Bevel Aqua Lacey and Cuff have got plenty of work to do, as does TJ Handy. Well, TJ Hendy a long way back, and we saw him pick up a nice little wave, but obviously had come off the back at some stage. And if it stays the way that it stands right now, Max Brooks and Luke Cuff will be eliminated from this final race. But no elimination after the first half of the swim, only as they make their way through the arch the second time. And already a couple of boys walking. So that first race in the opening swim taking its toll on these Ironmen. They're some of the fittest in the world, but these conditions are certainly making things tough. So it's Ali Day who's in the lead. Looks like Matt Poole's gone up into second place. No, it's Matt Poole who's gone to the lead straight past Ali Day. So a big swim. We saw him run straight in and not run down to the southern end. He's gone to the front and he is now absolutely firing on the front of this race. Ali Day chasing very, very hard with the blue cap with the yellow star. Dan Collins is there in the centre. Shannon Eckstein on the far right. And the big rivalry, the big names of the sport come to the fore and they're going to go head to head right here, right now. They just want to finish inside the top eight and make sure they're through to the final. A couple weight. Shannon swims over to get himself in the right position. Tries to go down it. Catch it broken. I don't know if he can. Yes, he can. What a great performance there. All the way to the centre. And Shannon Eckstein, supreme surf skills from one of the greatest of all time. And right alongside him is the apprentice, Matt Poole. So the two boys managed to pick up that wave broken. They've been joined there by Daniel Collins, the superfish. He's always thereabouts when it's swim first. We've also got Mac Matt Bevilacqua and... Corey uh, Taylor there. TJ, oh, sorry, Ali Day doing his best to get back into it after leading that first leg. But those three will really have a bit of work cut out for them as Eckstein, Poole and Collins go round. It's really the old, the new and the next generations racing head to head. Well, Bevilacqua goes through transitions. His transitions have always been strong. 
Day sits there comfortably, as does Corey Taylor. And it's Luke Cuff who's currently racing to stay in this fight against club mate James Lacey. They go around. The swimmers are coming in. The ski paddlers are going out. Eckstein in one. Pool in two. Collins in three. There's been no change there, but it's the back of the race that's really interesting. Luke Cuff stays alive, and Max Brooks stays alive. He goes from 10th to 8th and keeps his race hopes alive. James Lacey, just like that, has been eliminated. He goes out the window, and our round one winner, TJ Hendy, goes with him. Well, TJ Hendy at 10th place, he's not going to be too happy with that after his round one win, so it'll be back to the drawing board for Hendy. And Max Brooks manages to keep himself in this race. He's going in with Luke Cup right now onto the ski leg, and it's whether or not these boys can pick up a couple more places to make sure they're not eliminated. Oh, look at the grunt on Paul there as he tries to get the ski going. But if we put TJ Hendy's result into perspective, his best result last year was a 16th place. And he's had a win and a 10th in the first two rounds this year. So pretty good stuff. Paul goes out now over and look how hard he's grinding. Oh, one goes off. Is that Corey Taylor? No, it's Bevel Aqua. So Matt Bevel Aqua has been absolutely smashed there. So he's gone from second place to in the back half of the field just like that. Pool's in clean water, flying out to see. Collins is in clean water, flying out to sea. Shannon Eckstein's been belted as well. And this one could just turn on its head for Matty Poole as he's flying out and getting a lead. Well, it's Matt Poole in one. Collins still chasing. So Collins has been ever consistent so far in these conditions. He's managed to limit his mistakes. Oh, and a little one comes through there sideways. There. I think he's gone. Yes, he has. He's gone off. He hit it sideways. And you know from ski paddling, you just can't hit a wave on your side. Otherwise, you're going off. Well, Ali Day's still working to drag his way back up and keep himself out of that red zone. And it looks as though it's changed now. So Luke Cuff and Max Brooks have joined alongside Corey Taylor. And Matt Bevel Bevilacqua has gone backwards, so Bevilacqua now sitting in the red zone and could be dropped. Unbelievable. Here goes Paul. He finds himself a wave. Is it too big? I don't know. They want safety first at the moment. Collins goes round. Day goes round out the back, and we're riding with Matt Poole. He puts the power down. Let's see what he's got. We get a good look inside the toes. He flips it off, and he's over there. Oh, no drama for Poole, but he still hangs on. He's got it. No dramas at all for Poole there. He's holding onto his ski as Bevilacqua cops another one. Pull. He knows there's a wave coming. He grabs it with both hands and he's going to ride it rodeo style all the way to the beach. Let's see what he can do. Oh, he flips the leg over, tries to bring it around and good stuff there. Good skills from Matty Pool And Shannon Eckstein is on an absolute monster out the back. It's at least six foot. He puts the power down, leans back. Oh, and he's off and gone. He loses his ski, does he? Yes. Could that be race over for the greatest of all time? If he couldn't hold on to that wave, no one could. Well, he was sitting in second place. Ali Day gets to go straight past Shannon Eckstein now and that will move him up into second place. So Shannon Eckstein could be in trouble of being in the cutoff. Matt Pools managed to keep his ski straight back to the beach. He did have a little bit of trouble and I wonder Josh, a brand new ski on Friday for Matt Poole. Picked it up from the Dolphin factory, got it stickered, here to race it at Coolum and whether or not that ski is actually what he should be on instead of his old one which he's used to is interesting to note. Well there's no choice now. He's on it and he's got to do his best with it. Day in second. Collins is having a stellar race. Could we see back to back upsets in and around? Oh just like that and we didn't see the race for seventh place there and Luke Carth has gone home and that race well it came out of nowhere. The four of them were chasing around and Luke Cuff is not happy. He's kind of wondering what happened there and that's the Eliminator format. You've got to be on your toes and speaking of toes, we're back on and riding with Matt Poole. Well, it shows how hard and how tight this racing is. A wave with five on it, one eliminated and now the boys are still racing. But remember, another two will be dropped when these boys get back to the beach. So it's not over yet. They're not safe. Nobody's safe. Even Matt Poole, who was our leader, is currently in a position where he may be caught by the back markers. And that's not Shannon Eckstein picking his ski up. That's his handler, Kev Morrison, as we see Shannon running down the beach. He is definitely eliminated now. So Shannon settles with a sixth place finish as they make their way out to sea. And here we go. The race is on. Ali Day pushes up and over. Whoa, he takes a big breath as well. A little bit of fear in the eyes of a couple of these boys as Max Brooks, the silent assassin, he was at the back early on, worked his way in. He goes,
goes up and over a wave there. As Corey Taylor goes up and over, Matt Bevilacqua gets pounded again. It is not his day. He has been smashed. Corey Taylor's off. Ali Day goes up and over on the right, and Dan Collins is going backwards. These four at the back, they're in trouble. Well, Ali Day managed to stay on his ski and head further south to the right-hand side of the screen. That was enough for him to get around and now put himself from about fifth or sixth place up into second or third. So Ali Day has got the skills. He's managed to keep his ski straight, and now the boys are heading to that can. Matt pull out in front. Max Brooks in two. It's Ali Day in third with Corey Taylor sitting in fourth. And Matt Pevilacqua and Dan Collins have a lot to do if they're going to get back into it at this point. Paul's lead has been obliterated. He had 50 to 100 metres. It is now 5 to 10 metres on third place. And Max Brooks is breathing down his neck. He's found a little runner, Brooks. He's gone to the left-hand side on the blue ski. Will he push over the top? I think he will. Paul's definitely on it on the right-hand side. Brooks goes down it as well. They straighten him up. Let's see if they can hold him to the beach. Getting a wave is one thing. Keeping it upright is a completely different story. Well, the boys are managing to hold it straight at this stage, but the wave hasn't broken. So it starts to peak behind them. Paul puts the power down. He's got the ability. He's put his ski out in front, and that's exactly what he needed to do. Max Brooks has done the same, and they've managed to negotiate the cool and break as Ali Day pushes down one out the back. Ali Day's got a wave and kept his hopes alive. Corey Taylor's on an absolute bomb as well. He's taken a chance, a massive risk. It'll be break or bust here for Corey Taylor, and I don't know how it's worked out. We'll wait and see. But pool is up, and Corey Taylor is swimming out the back. We can see his ski upside down. It looks like a race in three at this point. Max Brooks goes to the lead. Matt pulls in second place, and Ali Day, he's not in this race, but he's close enough if he's good enough. Well, we currently have six men. We're looking for the top four. Max Brooks takes position one. Matt Pool will be in two. Ali Day, three. Who will be our fourth person? Who will carry on and still have the potential to finish on the podium? Well, Corey Taylor got absolutely smashed. Matt Bevilacqua got pounded as well. Dan Collins has been creamed. It's whoever can survive, get themselves around. And it's Bevilacqua. Bevilacqua had to roll three or four times on that ski, but he's managed to keep his race alive and got at least a top four finish. Let's see if he can catch any of the field. In and away, Ali Day. So we've got three on the boards. Bevilacqua survives. He's got plenty of work to do the well, Tasmanian. He is a long way behind Josh, but he's putting in a huge transition for Bevilacqua. He knows if he wants to finish in the top three, he's got a lot of work to do, and he's currently 150 metres behind Max Brooks and Matt Poole, who are our leaders out in front. Bevilacqua picks up the board. He enters the break for what could be the last time, unless he can put himself into the top two. Well, what about the company that Max Brooks is keeping? Three race winners, three series contenders, three guys who you think are at the peak of their power, at the top of the sport and Max Brooks the young gun. He's leading Generation Next. He wants to turn Generation Next into Generation Now and he's showing that he's not afraid of reputation or any of these other guys. He's in the thick of the action at the moment as Ali Day leans up and over. Corey Taylor calls it a day there. A fifth place finish for Corey is one of his best results ever in the overall series. Only a couple of top 10 finishes for Corey so a great job there for him and he lives to fight another day. The boys are making their way out and Bevel Aqua, he's getting back into it. Well, it's evened right up. We look at our lead three, and it looks like Paul's gone back in the middle. And it's Day and Brooks on the two sides. It looks as though Day is going to get a slip, as is Max, Max Brooks. But Paul is getting hit in the middle more so than the others. And at the moment, it's Paul who's sitting in third by about 10 to 15 metres to Day and Brooks. Only two will survive to the last board leg. And it looks like either side of the course, Day's up and over. Brooks is up and over. And the two from Karawa have been obliterated. They're being forced to roll and pop and roll and pop and roll and pop and that's not a dance you want to do with a cool and break because it'll win out every time it'll throw you around like a rag doll and our two leaders max brooks on the left and ali day on the right they're in green water and it looks like they've negotiated the break dan collins another strong performance he has arrived he's no longer a young gun he is one of the bona fide best in the business and our two leaders are going stroke for stroke towards that first turning can well, brooks is looking to get across on today he wants to sit right there with him, doesn't want to allow him to get away. If you stay close together, it means you're most probably going to come in on the same wave, and that'll put you in a race in two. Bevilacqua and Pool, we can't see them on the screen at the moment. It's all about Brooks and Day at this stage, and the boys 
from Karawa have got a lot of work to do if they're going to put themselves into the top two and have a chance at taking this race title. You think they'd be working together as well. You know that they've just got to get in the top two and keep your race alive. And Ali Day, well, he gets a runner that could turn into a wave. And wow, just like that, the gap opens up. Max Brooks responds. Matt Pools turns the can and he just struggles to get round ever so slightly. He's already looking for a wave. Bevel Aqua's on the guts as well, trying to get around, just trying to get himself back into it. Brooks gets a wave. Ali Day misses it. We're back into a race in two on the front. And I think Poole and Bevel Aqua, they're going to be racing for the podium. Well, they most certainly are. It's going to be a race to the beach, just like we saw in the women's. And they've both come down a wave at the back. So that is our race oh, into... Oh, Brooks is off. Brooks is off. Are they going to catch him? What a mistake from Brooks. That might not even cost him the race. That might get him eliminated right here, right now, because Poole and Bevilacqua are coming very, very fast on the wave behind. Brooks looks around. He's got himself a runner. I think that's enough. Our top two sorted. Ali Day goes into the final leg. Max Brooks alongside him, and he here we go. We're into the final stages. This is the race for third place. Paul and Bevilacqua. Paul and Bevilacqua. Who's going to finish on the podium? Paul's got the inside run. Paul's sneak in and around. I think that'll be enough there. Oh, the push and shove. They drop the boards. And that is that. Paul gets it. Bevilacqua will finish fourth. Ali Day still leads. And Mac Brooks is the only man who can steal this win back off the lad from Surface Paradise. Well, Ali Day is now going out for the very last time. If he can negotiate the break well enough, Matt Poole, will he be happy with the third place? He's a current series champion. He has a look around, a tough day of racing. You've got to be happy with the way you've performed out here at Cool. And Max Brooks still has plenty of work to do. It's not over for him yet. He could find his first ever race win. Well, I don't know if Matt Bevilacqua knows he's out. He looks like maybe he's going for a warm down or I don't know what's going on, but leave him alone, Bevy. You're out of it. It's time for Ali Day and Max Brooks to go head to head. The final leg, you can see them next to each other pushing very, very hard at the moment. Up and over. Day on the right. Brooks on the left. Oh, Day's forced to roll and maybe, just maybe a couple of decisions like that could cost him the race or could make him the race as he goes up and over and Brooks looks very, very tired. Well, gap has opened up there for Day. We saw him make a quick move to the left and that's what you're looking for on the way out to negotiate the break. But Brooks is out the back as well. He seems to be in clean water or not. Brooks has had to roll one so that could cost Brooks the race if Day can get over this oh, one. He but rolls Day again. goes under. So wave after wave the Coulomb sets are rolling through and Ali Day is underneath his board. you got to pay to play out here and Ali Day has been forced to roll but he gets over this. Max Brooks gets absolutely smashed. Imagine going head-to-head -head with one of the best in the business in only, what, your fourth season in the top grade. And that's what Max Brooks is doing. He knows it's only two men. Ali Day takes a massive look around. He knows he's got a gap. He knows this could be it as he makes his way towards the turning cans. As Brooks, if he gets over this, he's given himself a chance. He does. He goes sideways and he falls off again. Just like that, Max Brooks, while well, the door closes ever so slightly for him once again. Well, Day has done the work. He's made sure he's out in front all alone, and that's the gap he wanted. That's what he's been looking for, and now he's got a chance to turn his final turning can and head for home. All that stands between him now is the wave zone at Coulomb. Whether or not he can get himself back in without doing a Coulomb nose stand. And Day lifts the rating. Have a look at the arms go. He's up. He's oh. got a lift. He's extended his gap but he needs a wave. Wow, just like that. I thought he was down that wave there. I thought he had the win, and he's put himself in the best possible position there. Brooks needs a miracle. Brooks has been valiant all day, but I don't think it's going to come. Ali Day gets the wave, and he will get the win. There is no doubt about it. He's too good to mess it up from here. Ali Day, you can see the smile on his face. He realised that that is that, and it's all she wrote. He will win round two of the Nutrigrain Ironman series. He was forced to fight off not only 20, 20 men, but to go head to head with Max Brooks towards the end. He fought off Coulomb. He fought off the M Shape Eliminator. He gives us a little cheer here. He knows he's on top and back to best form. He won the Coulomb out of gold not long ago, and this has turned into an endurance race, and he is an endurance animal. A special specimen. Ali Day on top in round two. He hugs his coach there, Zane Hamill, there. He knows that this is his day. Ali Day, high fives all round, and he's got enough time to cruise up. Salutes the crowd, salutes the crew, and he will be our round two Nutrigrain Ironman Series champion. Well, he did it his way. It's his day today.
Ali Day is our round two champion at Coolum, and he'll celebrate tonight. What a performance there. Comes out on top ahead of Max Brooks and Matt Poole in third place. And this is Brooks' best performance ever, and I'm sure there's plenty more to come. Well, Maxi Brooks, a huge performance here at Coolum. He negotiated the break, got his skills right, a high five there for Ty on the beach, and Max Brooks has had a great performance here at Coolum. The Newport kid, he is a star of the future, gives the crowd a high five, thanks them for their support, and crosses the line to finish in second place overall, collect 88 points for the overall Nutrigrain Ironman Series point score, and he's a very happy chap hugging Halle Day. When well, we take a look at the overall results, it's Day from Brooks, Poole, Bevilacqua, Taylor, Collins, Cuff, Eckstein. They are top eight. Lacey and Hendy made the final. Hayden White was unlucky to miss out. Fletcher, Finesse, Wheeler were all in the final. Timperley, Maynard, Linden and Beatty didn't have the best day. And we're here with the winner of the Kellogg's Nutrigrain round two, Ali Day. What a race. Oh, mate, it's so good. It's, um, I don't think every Ironman loves those conditions. And when we turned up this morning and saw it, you know, getting bigger and bigger. I think everyone just, you know, was starting licking their lips. And um, I don't know, for me personally, mate, it's probably not, you know, I'm suited to the long distance more. And today was just about going out there and just proving to myself that I had the, the caliber to, to, to go with those guys and just have the, the skills that I've been learning from the guys at Surfers. So um, that was a real personal victory for me today, mate. Yeah, I think in particular, I was really impressed with your swim leg, uh, even earlier today in your first round and also the second round, you really set it up in that swim. Yeah, it's something that I've been working with Zaino at, at Surfers and with Trev as well. I've, it's something I've always struggled with in surf, like getting to the bottom and, and knowing what way the water's moving and things like that. And as I said, the guys at Surfers do it really, really well. And we're really lucky that we've got the waves there every afternoon. So it's a better, you know, what a spot to, I guess, practice those skills in. And as I said, when I turned up this morning, I was like, you beauty. Like, this is a chance to, you know, to, to practice and, and have a race in these conditions. And Mate, I never would have thought I would have come, come away with a win today. I was literally thinking yesterday, oh, I'll be happy with a top 10 sort of thing and um, just thinking this might be my weakest round. But, man, you just never know, you know. And, you know, I had, had, you know, had Mother Nature on my side today. I had a lot of good luck and, um, yeah, it was just really fun out there. Mate, you spoke about the service paradise and the SP love. There's a really good culture there. And, and round one, TJ Handy wins from SP love. Now round two, Ali Day. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? It's, um, yeah... The club there is definitely on a on a really good shift towards, you know, going back to the day how it was back in the day. So we've got some really good mentors there. Trev's our president, Zaino, uh, our coach. We've got a really good group of boys and girls there, and uh, it's a real positive environment at the moment. It's definitely rubbing off on me, and it's hopefully it's rubbing off on them as well. Well, mate, outstanding performance on behalf of everyone. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Well, with a first and a third alley day, miles in front of his club mate TJ Handy in the overall Nutrigrain Ironman Series point score. Further down the page, Hayden White, Nathan Gray, Jackson Maynard of all had solid results so far, but they'll have to get a move on if they want to be the champion at the end of the year. Well, this unstoppable juggernaut of surf sports continues next week. Plenty more surf sports action from Coolum, but this has been the Nutrigrain Ironman and Ironwoman Series presented by Ocean 6.